All right, everybody, it's Camila Rose, The Bliss Institute, and we are back at it again. I hope I don't have anything in my teeth. Oh, well, this camera quality is so poor, you won't be able to tell anyway. Um, so I checked out another life. I had someone comment that I could watch the last two episodes. I wouldn't miss anything. I'd still be able to see what was going on. And that the interest ending was actually interesting. So I said, fantastic. I'm going to check it out. So we back at it again. We came in on episode nine, really felt like, you know, I was like, oh, stuff should have happened because, you know, I've missed what? Six episodes? Girl, no. I came right back in, was able to pick up right where I left off. So something's wrong with Sasha, which you could read in the episode description that something was off with Sasha. He seems strange anyway, so that's fine. Apparently the aliens are inside of him. They are controlling him. But he let them in. I'm telling y'all, this ain't nothing but Animorphs. This is Animorphs 2019. Only this time, they have the technology to go out into space and interact with the aliens. So they're in their, in his brain. They have gone into his um, cerebral cortex. They are controlling him. They're maybe using some type of electronical, electronic system to, like, control him so now they're getting him to like take down the crew because the crew has the possibility to go and destroy their planet on their ship uh zane and bernie are in the medical bay they're down below and i guess they don't have some like love connection or something i missed that in those few episodes but it didn't seem all that interesting to be honest with you so sasha was sticking his little weird like i don't know I guess cables into uh, I believe you say his name boot camp into his eyes to figure out what their defenses are so that he could take them down. And then he decides to turn off the cooling system so that the core overheats and then it'll blow the ship up. So then everybody dies. So now they're having to turn that off. Now Zane and Bernie, they're down below. They're closer to the core. They are, it's getting really hot where they are much quicker than it is. Everyone else who is higher up. And so they're safe in their medical bay, but outside in the hallways to actually move around, it is sweltering, it'll fry them up. So they're stuck. So apparently, William, the computer alien, or the computer system, AI system, which has feelings, too many feelings, if you ask me, has all these feelings, has turned on them. But I guess it doesn't seem like maybe he's turned on them. We'll find out later in the episode why he's so mad. And I was just like, okay. So they figure out a way to communicate with them because Sasha turns off the comms so they can't communicate. And they realize we can communicate through the, basically the poop shoot where they do the nutrient and they pull out the, you know, nutrients from their poop and stuff and like get rid of it. So they, shoot that down and they're able to talk to uh it's nico and august and i can't remember what the other dude's name is so they are able to talk to bernie and zane and they're like bernie you have to go out there and manually turn back on the cooling systems and so bernie's like i'll go and i was like yay you know because he doesn't want zane to have to go out there because you know that's his boot thing now i guess and so they're like you've got your hazmat suits which i'm like are these hazmat suits made to withstand the temperatures? But that's fine. So they're like, here we go. William is loose, useless. He has lost his backup systems because he has decided to like take himself to his fantasy world where he doesn't have to feel any pain or any feeling. So he's basically being a computer like he's supposed to, but he's not responding to anything and working like he's supposed to because his feelings are hurt. So he's just like, I'm mad at you and I don't want to talk to you and I'm disappearing. Like he's throwing a fit. Um, he, can, he, he won't come back. We flip over to Eric, you know, the husband, the one who I'm like, I am unamused with, and we really don't need his storyline. Well, apparently, how they have been communicating with that crystal tower thing that has the aliens, I could think there's some humans in there, maybe. They've been, like, working with humans who were curious about what they were here for and what they were doing, and then, like, getting them to agree, I guess, to let the aliens put themselves inside of them, which I'm like, really? Like, I know there's this whole joke thing about going to Area 51, or at least I think it's a joke, and, like, 
they're like, they can't take us all out and we're going to go see what they're doing with the aliens. And we know this is real, but I'm just like, I don't really know if people would let aliens put themselves inside of them, but maybe they would. So the Harper Glass, the um, internet, the internet um, reporter, she has let an alien, look, there's a kitty. She has let an alien, which I have to watch because I think he wants to get my other cat. I know you're not supposed to do that, but like, it's the only way to keep him in control. He, he's real wild. Literally, he's wild. Found him outside. Anyways, um, she has let the aliens get in her head and she is being controlled by them. She is working with them. And I guess maybe they thought that the humans were going to attack them. So they did some big like orb thing and they, and they blasted the little girl, Jana. And so she knocked out in the hospital. Eric is all upset. Cause he's like my baby and he wants to save her. And they're like, we've got a way to finally talk to the aliens. They're in Harper. Let's go talk to her. So he's asking her questions and she's like, I guess the little girl has some type of anomaly so that the blast affected her more than it would affect normal children. And she's like, the aliens really didn't want to, you know, hurt her. And I'm like, I don't think the aliens care about, care about that little girl at all. But, you know, he believed it. He's traumatized. So he's not in his right mind. And she was like, but they can save her. They can help her. And I'm like, of course, the aliens can do that. Like, really? Okay. But he's going for it. He's like, oh, my God. Okay, let's work together. Let's figure it out. And so, of course, you know, the head ups, they're like, nah, we got to get you out of here because you're about to turn on us and partner up with these aliens to try to take us out just so you can save your little girl. So they drag him out and we move back to, oh, the alien's name is the Akaya. Um, we find out some more about them. I don't really know what all they really want. I think they believe that the humans will be violent. So they're trying to like take the defense and take out the humans before the humans will take them out. It seems like a mess. It doesn't seem like it's making a lot of sense, but honestly, they're not too off because, you know, we do tend to be a little like not trusting of others. So I'm not, you know, saying that maybe they're too wrong, but it does seem like in this show, at least, that they wanted to, well, okay. The Nego girl and her husband, Eric, they wanted to talk to the aliens and find out what's going on with them. I don't really know if the government per se wanted to find out what was going on with the aliens. They might have just wanted to take them out. So they might not have been all that wrong. Anyways, so we're back to the ship, right? So we've got Bernie and Zane. Like I said, I guess they have formed some like connection and they like each other. I was like, okay, six episodes. But also, like, is this the time? Is this the time to be trying to hook up with somebody? I just felt like that wasn't wise. And I feel like we've gone over this so many times in so many movies where it's like these trauma bonds where you're in these life or death situations and you meet up with somebody and the chemicals and the hormones are going. And now y'all decided y'all liked each other. And I'm just like, mm, I guess. But if it's going to help them to survive, because sometimes you need like that connection to feel like you need to fight and to, to make it in the world, then uh, good luck for them. Yay. Um, so Bernie, he gets in the hazmat suit. He's going to go out there. He's going to turn off the coolest system. He's going to make everything work. He does it. Sasha, which like I guess because of his electronic connection, is able to control the ship. So he just keeps turning. So they go this back and forth where Bernie turns the cooling system on and Sasha turns them off. And they go back and forth in this ridiculousness. Bernie has the bright idea to like jam up and disconnect the communication system um, or the electronic system that's connecting the coolant system to the overall computer mainframe so that Sasha won't be able to turn them off anymore. But he gets electrocuted in the process. And I was like, like I said, I guess he figured time for me to go out and like save the world. So he's laid out on the floor. Zane, the coolant system cools everything down. People are able to move around again. Zane runs out there to try to save him. She's giving him life support or CPR, which it was just the chest compressions. It wasn't the breath. So I guess she figured he still had oxygen. Like, I'm, I'm being a little nitpicky here. So I will I will take note in that. But, like, if he's down on the ground, she didn't check for whether he was breathing. This is, this is, the, this is the CPR training in me coming out. But she didn't check to see if he was breathing. She just starts giving him chest compressions. So I'm like, well, girl, if he ain't got no air... 
yay. But like, if he's not breathing, you need to make sure he's breathing. I don't think he was, but maybe he was. I, whatever. Anyway, he comes back. So that's fine. So now we have, um, we go back to Nico, who's trying to wake up Izanami. And Izanami is an electrical engineer, um, a mechanical en- engineer, or technical, technical. I think she's a technical engineer. She could work on the computer system because Nico is still trying to get back William because she's like, we need him to help us to take down Sasha. And so she has to manually wake Izanami up from the soma, from the sleeping uh, system that they're in and get her to like get out there. Well, it takes three minutes for them to wake up and get out the pod. So she still has the ability to be affected by Sasha. So Sasha's running around with his little system talking to everybody. And he's like, Nico, this is your fault. I don't know why you're trying to stop this. You can't control this. They're they are just wanting to protect themselves. The the what's their name? The, the Akaya are just trying to protect themselves. And Nico's like, this is you, William. You could be in control. You don't have to do what they tell you to do. You can do what you want to do. And William is it's like he he comes back a little bit, but it doesn't last. He gets taken over again, and then he's like. Cut the oxygen. So Izanami's gone. She out. She dies in that little sleep chamber. And I was just like, this doesn't. This was sad. But uh, let's see. Where am I now? Uh, the Buell Camp guy, he's knocked out. He's trying to be woken up. He does wake up. But I'm a little suspicious. I'm a little iffy about him because he's had such close contact with Sasha with some aliens in his head. So I'm like, y'all really need to be watching him. Um, so then they go and see because Sasha was like, he's like, pull up the star system and he's seeing where they are. Then he's like, zoom in. All right, there, that's where we're going. So then the whole crew is looking at the, um, where they're heading to and they realize that he's sending them to a black hole. So in the, in the black space part that they're in, there's a black hole within that. So he's going to get them sucked up into the black hole. So they're like, all right, we need to get off the ship. And Nico's like, I got to try to go get William back online. And they're just going to, that's the plan. Because she's like, we'll get you guys into the like escape pod ship because they're really close to their destination where they actually wanted to go, where the aliens are located. And she's like, and at least that way we can follow through with the mission, which I guess is still to just make contact and try to figure out what's going on. So she puts everybody on the ship. Nico puts everybody on the ship. And they are like, you can't stay here. And she's like, this is my fault. And so then, the, and I wish I could remember what her name is, but the one that was in love with the um, do the died in the first episode, she was like, this isn't your fault. This is William's fault. He could have decided not to work with them. He could have made different choices. And Nico was like, this is when we get into the T, girls, when we get into the T. Because Nico was like, no, it is my fault because William, remember, William is the computer. He's the AI. She's like, William was in love with me and I knew it. And I made him turn into Eric. Eric is the husband. I made him turn into Eric. And then we had sex. And then I acted like it never happened. And I said, we have a sex with computers now. We have a sex with computer systems now. Like, this is where this is going. This is getting very strange. So, because William has all these feelings, when she had sex with him and then ignored him, he got his feelings hurt and he ran off to go pow and decided he didn't want to feel anything so that he wouldn't have to experience the pain of the rejection and being ignored. And so now Nico has screwed herself over and is trying to fix it to bring to bring William back. So she goes and decides her plan is she going to put herself in the soma so she can be, I guess, in the system with William, where he is, they're on like a nice little shore spot. William's like chilling. I said, she gonna die because she's put herself back into that little summer pod and, you know, she's unprotected and that Sasha dude's running around and apparently knows all the stuff that she's doing. So she's 
trying to tell William about how she was like, this is nice. Like, she pulled up on him trying to be, like, real smooth. Like, this is a nice place. But you know what's even better? You could come back with us. We really need you. I need you. And William is not here for it. He's not having it. He said, you manipulative ho. You have gotten to me for the last time. And you are not going to pull me into this again. And she was like, I'm not manipulating you. I really do need you. And I was like, yo, William, you know what's going on this ship. You know she needs you. You know they all need you. Like, they're going to die if they can't take out this Sasha dude and, like, figure out how to get this ship to not go into the, or at least Nico's going to die. And William is just like, I'm not, like, what about my needs? And I was just like, oh, God, we're going here. Because I was like, this is, this is what I was like when I talked about Zane and I talked about Bernie. I was like, this is not the time to be making love connections because y'all are on this death mission where everything has been going wrong. And, like, somebody's going to die. Like, this is not going to end well. Y'all are stuck out in space. So, I guess, at the best, maybe y'all can have weird space babies. I don't really know. So, I'm just like, but William and Nico ain't having no weird space babies. What's he going to do? Like, jump into her Alexa when they get back to Earth. And now he'll be, like, her AI boyfriend while she's with her husband back on. Like, anyways, they're not trying to make sense. And that's fine. We've already discussed this show does not care about making sense. So that is fine. So um, now they're like, okay, William is human adjacent. He is, he has all the human emotions. So she was like, you have to learn how to deal with the pain because we all go through pain and we all have to learn how to deal with it. And William's like, nah, I do not. I am a robot. I am a computer and I can turn it off. So Sasha busts through because I told her she was setting herself up for failure, putting herself into that soma pot. Sasha busts through. He tries to get her. He got a, he's got a, um, what do you call those things? Not a hatchet, but I guess it's like a hatchet, an axe. He's got an axe. He's about to chop her up. They're fighting. William's standing on the shore is having an emotional mental breakdown, trying to figure out if he wants to go back and save Nico or if he wants her to die. And so they're just going towards the black hole. And Sasha is starting to choke Nico out. She blacks out. We see a bright light. And then we see that William has saved Nico. And they have a plan. Because they're, he, they're like, well, maybe we can power our way out of getting sucked into the black hole's gravitational pool. And William is like, the ship doesn't have enough power. So Nico is like, well, Sasha's getting power from somewhere. Do you think that power source could be plugged into our ship and get us out of here? So they're like, let's give it a try. So next thing you know, we're back on. So there's, we're back to Eric. Eric has stuck in like a communication device to Harper while she's eating. And now they're talking and he's like, how do I save my daughter? And she's like, you get me out of here. And I'm like, you're an idiot, Eric, but you gonna do it. So I'm here for it. Let's go play with the aliens in their crystal tower. Um, so we also see back with the escape pod with all the other crew members, they're kind of hanging out near, um, the planet they need to get to, but they're not going there yet because the, um, I, would, I need to learn her name. I'm going to look it up because the one who's flying the ship then is like, no, I want to wait for Nico. We need to give it a chance. She's been saving us this whole time and we have been doing her wrong. And I'm like, you have been though. But Nico, she's been off too. So don't feel too bad about it. Next thing you know, their big old ship has popped up. It's worked. They don't plug the ship's power into the to the back of Sasha's head. So I don't think Sasha's coming back, but maybe anything happens on this show. So they unplug the source in. They're flying back. They're bringing the crew back on board of the big ship. And now we're just waiting, I guess, to see what's going to happen when they go down to the planet. Um, in my opinion, these are my thoughts. Again, the show really, like, it's getting interesting if you completely and totally just remove any logic or anything that, like, needs to make sense. So then, like, you can watch it. Like, it's a complete fantasy. It's like a complete fantasy novel where they've had to make a whole new world and a whole new system and there's whole new laws which govern it. If you take it from that stance, then okay. I do just want to see what happens, like... The commenter who said, check out the last two episodes, like, I want to see what happens when they get down to this planet, because I'm like, all right, we've got these anamorph aliens down there. 
hopping on the folks uh, cerebral cortex and their systems and controlling their bodies. Are y'all going to try to like make this work? Is this going to be some weird thing like on the um, what was that movie with the big old um, automatrons, the text, the text, um, something rising, something rising, um, Pacific rising in the second one. The, the second Pacific Rising, where the one science dude ended up like phasing in with the aliens. And so then the aliens like got all in his head and started controlling him and got them on his side. Like it, it's it's taking me a little bit there. Um, and it's definitely giving me Animorph Yerk vibes. Like they're just controlling them and doing all this stuff. So I'm like, it's going to be like some weird thing where now it's like, you know, you can, you can get your own alien, you know, person or being or whatever. I don't know. Um, if this Jana chick, the little daughter turns out to be some like superhero, she got some powers or something from her genetic anomaly to do something or other. I have feelings about that, but we'll get to it. If we go there, William has too many feelings I don't know if they can turn that down on the shows I've seen before. They have like settings where you could change how much feeling, how many feelings they had. I believe it happened on Blade Runner. I believe that it's happened on, uh, well, they tried to do it, but that book was crazy on the alien movies with David. Like, you know, maybe they can turn his feeling meter down a little bit so that he can be a little bit more like as he's supposed to be a computer to run the ship. He reminds me of a cancer. Y'all know I'm into the astrology. Y'all know I'm into the tarot and all that stuff. He is a cancer. You could not convince me otherwise. That man is has all the feelings in the world. He feels all of them. And he has no shame in having those feelings. And I'm just like, homie, there's too much going on right now for you to be all up in these feelings. You're going to have to dial it back. I told you not to sleep with people while y'all on this ship. Y'all didn't want to listen. Y'all over here making love connection. You're making a love connection with a human. And I don't think you are human. I like, I don't know if they could like, maybe I should watch that episode. Because now I'm curious if that like how they actually had sex. Like when he, is his body material? So like, because he'd be phasing in and out of things and like morphing into other people. So is he like a physical material or is it like a, like a, he taps into your brain. So like they had like virtual sex. And if so, then like, how does he expect for this to like go forth anywhere? And like, was he able to feel the sex when they had it? Or was it just like a computer algorithm that figured out like what this would feel like to a computer? I have questions. I have thoughts. I'm curious about that. I don't want to go back to the episode and watch where it actually happens to see if any of my questions are answered because I don't believe that they are. Eric is getting played. The Harper chick is probably going to kill him or die or have something else happen. Um, so yeah, let's check out this last episode. I'm going to go watch it right now and then I will be back with another live stream. I hope you're having a great day. Take care of yourselves. Rest up. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Bye-bye.